I've played 100 hours of Ark Survival Ascended, and today I'm going to tell you exactly why it's different from Ark Survival Evolved, and ultimately if buying it and potentially the hardware needed to run it is worth it, as well as some alternatives in case you can't afford to buy a new rig. We'll go through five main points, content and primary game changes, which will lead into a discussion on graphics, performance, server support, major bugs, and ultimately if the game is worth buying at this point in time. If you end up liking this video, please click the like button below since it helps push this video to more people. Jumping right into content and primary game changes, I found that there were too many to count. As someone who had nearly 11,000 hours in Ark Survival Evolved, Ascended bombarded me with so many changes it felt like an entirely new game. But don't just take my word for it, let's go through some of the major ones. Right after opening the game, you're going to notice a new main menu theme by the amazing Gareth Coker. This thing is awesome. You'll also probably notice a new user interface or UI, and honestly, it took me a minute to get used to this, but I pretty much am fine with it now. There's a new character creator, allowing you to create even more homunculi-looking creatures, but with Lumen bouncing off their bulging muscles. The player character themselves, with their animations, have been completely revamped, and I almost don't recognize any of the animations from the first game. It's, it's super smooth, and honestly, just running around the game, I found myself not getting bored, just literally running around doing nothing. Just staring at how my character moved. I just, I love it. They fleshed out the building systems and it works super well compared to the first game. It's, it's so nice. You can rotate things easily, snap just about anything in place and pick up any structures. Also, when you pick up or demo things, it also picks up or demos these structures that were dependent on said structure for stability, right? So if you demo your house and just take out the bottom walls, it's going to pick up or I guess demo all of the walls and ceilings on top of it. Loads of electrical structures, including forges, grills, chemistry benches, and so on, can now be powered by being just nearby a generator, meaning you don't need gas in these individual structures to turn them on. And you can say goodbye to cables altogether because, like I said, you don't actually need them anymore to power power stuff, and pipes almost altogether were removed because basically they've been dumbed down to allowing you to have Wi-Fi water taps and you just sort of place these water tanks essentially in a, in a trail leading from a water source to wherever you want your taps. I'm a little worried about the microplastics and something like that, but hey, it's convenient. Bluetooth water. They added a new dino slash tame tracker that allows you to actually track all of your currently tamed creatures and even tribe mates, though tracking people is a little glitchy right now. They majorly revamped sound design. And at this point, I barely recognized pretty much any of the dino sounds because it feels like they changed basically every single one of them. Whether it's, you know, environmental sounds or building structures or even weapons in some cases, they have completely changed just about everything. And it feels super refreshing in that sense. They have new ragdolls, and honestly, they're less fun to me, but they're a lot more stable, and they make for a better experience in the long run compared to your spaghetti on Kalosaurus, or, you know, sort of dragging your trimates around until they spin into some kind of ethereal realm and literally just vanish out of thin air. So generally more stable, but a little bit less, uh, less silly. <laughs> There's at least four times the number of dyes, uh, probably. I could be wrong there, but there's a lot of them. And these allow for so many more color variations. If you weren't satisfied with the freedom to customize your stuff in the first game, you will be pleasantly surprised. Also, there's a cosmetics tab now showing your dyes separate from your inventory. This could be annoying when trying to die and respawn because I've forgotten multiple times to store my dyes while emptying my inventory. Overall, it's a nice change though, and it does clean up the general clutter. Movement speed for both players and creatures was removed, as well as oxygen for water dinos. This makes the game feel a little bit more realistic all around, and honestly, I didn't even notice that they removed movement speed for dinos until like a week in and one of my tribe mates had told me. Just goes to show how good of a change it was, and I honestly really appreciate it. Island-based launch content is in the game. They removed the cryopods, you know, tech dinos, a lot of stuff that they sort of added in later expansions. And it really creates a bit of a blend of the first game where it's like modern day island, especially with all the graphical changes, which we're gonna talk about later on. Speaking of modern day island, there were massive loot changes to basically you know, supply drops, which now give ascendant stuff almost all the time. And the cave drops are even more broken. I mean, look at these, look at these blueprints. What the hell? The ocean has mineable coral, making it no longer a purely environmental display. It can effectively be cleared out to a degree, and you can get tons of stone with a Dunkleosis. New berries were added, and multiple items in general have new inventory icons entirely, which just goes to further sort of add this refreshing touch to the game overall. When, I mean, the fact that they changed the actual sprites for items is <laughs> amazing. There's now visual damage on a lot of stuff, including armor, weapons, resources, structures, and even players. Just about everything has a visual indicator for how damaged it is, and it helps a lot with emergency 
immersion and knowing you know how far you've harvested something this is one of the most unexpected things that they added because i did not anticipate such level of like realism and attention to detail i guess with such seemingly small things there's now a new hotbar you can switch on to if you hold q uh i don't know it seems like it sort of just shows items from your inventory i'm not sure exactly how to use this yet i haven't really used it much there's new physics for dropped items right the boxes you drop when you drop something and they're a lot more floaty now but overall they're more reliable you know when you're dropping items out of structures they actually sort of drop out the right end and it's nice there's better hit registration multiple times i was missing my shots because i was accounting for the desync in the first game you know a shoot ahead of a Nick the Ornus, and it's really no longer much of an issue anymore. You can actually just shoot at things, and generally if the arrow hit them, they're gonna get hit. That's weird to me, and probably to some of you as well, but uh, obviously it's a good thing for new players who don't expect to be shooting at the air to kill something. <laughs> Dung beetles and oviraptors now pick up poop and eggs, respectively, in a radius around them. Dung beetles seem to have a much higher radius than oviraptors, though, so uh, honestly, oviraptors aren't that great. Maybe just spam a bunch of them around your base on wandering make sure they're on wandering dung beetles will very quickly encumber themselves but you'll probably have to put some stone in your oviraptor to encumber it you can now dye torches to affect their flame color no more need for the sparkler skin this is awesome there is a photo mode in the game that has made it amazing for both recording cinematics and taking screenshots it doesn't even require being in spectator or you know being an admin as it can just be done in regular play at any time this is probably one of my favorite features because of just the amount of freedom, the sort of smooth mouse movement as well. It's just, dude, it's amazing. It's so good. There are more changes than just this, more than I could possibly count or even have found, I'm sure, but hopefully this has given you a good idea of the sheer quantity and quality of the changes here in the game. It's not just a port. This was a complete remaster exactly like they said. And speaking of remastering, let's go over some of the huge visual changes and graphical changes that are typically on the forefront of what people notice in a remade game like this. Again, there are way more than I could possibly count or be aware of, uh, you know, after only just having 100 hours in the game, but here are some of the major ones that I've noticed. Almost every model in the game was improved, textures-wise, whether through upscaling or by hand. This includes terrain, structures, resources, creatures, humans, weapons, you name it. Lumen and Nanite technology with Unreal Engine 5 has allowed for incredible leaps in lighting technology and rendering of, you know, faraway landscapes and structures. The footage you're watching here was recorded on an RTX 4090, but it's hard to describe just how nice this looks unless you're actually playing it yourself. Fluid Ninja allows for amazing water effects, and I believe this contributes to the way volumetric clouds, fog, and dynamic fireworks, like when you're holding a torch, grass and other foliage also is now physical and interacts when creatures or players walk over it. It also just, you know, bends and conforms to any structures you place, and when you pick them up, the grass comes back. A super neat little detail. Overall, the insane graphical revamp combined with the new animations of the player character have created an experience that feels familiar yet alien at the same time, and all I can say is that it's freaking awesome. My addiction to this game, if you can't already tell, has now just been absolutely rekindled. Now, it's important that we talk about a main topic here, which is performance and PC requirements. Not all things are good here, and I really want to highlight that. Many people are still playing Ark Survival Evolved because ASA simply does not run well on their PCs, if at all. It is next gen, after all, and while that is to be expected, I think a lot of people didn't expect such a gigantic leap, especially with how the marketing held off until basically the day before launch to give us any information about how this game would run on modern day hardware. My tribe mates noticed the poor performance as much as I did, and many of them actually bought a subscription for GeForce Now, which if you have good internet, is a super viable way to play ASA. Basically they have cloud servers with like RTX 4090s, and if you have an Nvidia card, I believe you can get an optimal experience out of using the service to play the game. If you're bandwidth can at least handle it. My internet's pretty bad, so there was honestly a lot of delay after trying it myself, and that prompted me to invest in a 4090. Good marketing on NVIDIA's end, I'll give them that. You can see the PC requirements for ASA on its store page if you want to look for yourself. Overall, the game runs well if you have a 40 series card, which can utilize AI generated frames, basically something called DLSS3. If you don't have that though, you're simply not going to run the game very well, and if you try, you'll get very poor performance. It is unfortunate, but that's just how it is at this point. In my own experience so far with the 4090, I've seen very few frame drops, and overall, I'm really impressed with the stability of the game while using a high-end card, because for reference, Ark Survival Evolved had issues for years, even with the Titan Xs and the highest end GPUs you could possibly buy. I'm I'm happy they seem to have learned from their mistakes with ASE, at least in that regard. 
On the other hand, when it comes to issues I have had, you may be familiar with my recent videos where I passionately chewed out a company called Nitrato. This crappy server provider was causing a host of issues for people who like to host their own servers or depend on it for income. And because of this, the launch of ASA was a bit of a dumpster fire. Nitrato's initial DRM or digital rights management at launch pissed off a lot of community members. And while it has since been removed, we have no guarantee we're not gonna get screwed over by it again or something even worse. This is my primary concern with ASA at the moment, as everything else in the game is great, it's just that right now the server support, multiple broken settings, and huge issues with player IDs is causing security issues and generally makes the whole experience of running a server or community a headache. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this one going forward and will let you all know if things change for the better or for the worse. But speaking of bad things, I think it's important we talk about major bugs and issues with ASA right now. Server stability, like I mentioned, is a big problem, especially on the back end, but there's quite a bit more than just that. Saves in player data have been getting corrupted in waves of patches that seem to fix one problem and, as usual, cause another. As I anticipated before ASA's launch, the same issue with corrupting data, putting servers in crash loops, and creating really unreliable experiences is here just as much, if not more, than ASE, and I do hope this gets resolved as soon as possible. I just had to roll back my own server eight hours because of a corruption issue, and I'd really prefer if that didn't have to happen. On the other hand, when it comes to general game bugs, my tribe mates and I have run into a couple. These include a camera bug issue where after hopping off a dyno, it seems to sometimes lock you into a kind of cinematic mode that you can't really, you know, interact with anything in. Uh, you can't even pull out weapons. Relogging fixes this. Also, sometimes you'll go flying off structures because I guess the game forgets to load them sometimes. I'm not entirely sure what causes this one. When dropping items, sometimes they just straight up ghost through structures like an industrial forge, for example. A new player may not realize how to pick up their items after seeing this happen. So for general user experience, this is a big issue. There are some items right now, such as raw mutton, that cannot have these stack sizes changed on them in the INI. There may be more, but this seems like a straightforward category issue in the programming of the game itself. Water dinos still die in ridiculous ways, such as my ichthyosaurus Yi Yi when he got too close to this coral reef and died instantly from touching the air. Speaking of which, dinos still get meshed and die instantly, which may be disproportionately affecting babies. I know it was sort of at launch, but they may have sort of fixed some of those issues. And like I said, server crashes are still super common. Overall, it's not as buggy as the ASC launch, but there are definitely a large amount of bugs that are still causing major issues for general user experience. Let me know what you've experienced yourself in the comments below. So on a higher note, let's talk about whether or not the game is worth buying with all of this in mind. But before I do, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of this video, me. Me? If you're looking for an Ark Survival Ascended server to play on and experience the game in a chill environment, look no further! About two weeks ago, I just launched a brand new Ark cluster called United Republic of Ark, or URA. This server is Patreon slash YouTube member only, and thus is a paywalled gated community. It is very close to the default vanilla settings, providing for an authentic, regular ARC experience that doesn't have super busted high rates or loads of mods. So if that's something you're interested in, head on down to my Discord with the link in the pinned comments to learn more. It should also be cross-play with consoles when they release, so just keep that in mind too. I've also been recording this entire time and will be making a Journey's Core style series on the server over the next few months as the various maps are unlocked and we expand our reach. So start your journey today on United Republic of Arc's island server with the Discord link below. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Should you buy ASA? Well, the game is $45 on Steam, and whenever it comes to console, it may have even more issues than what I outlined in this video. But in my honest experience so far, I'll say this. If ASA continues to improve in bugs and becomes overall more stable with less corruption of saves, crashes, etc., then I can see this absolutely being worth buying and playing. There was clearly a lot of work put into making a fresh new take on the Ark IP before Ark 2 with this remaster, and that cannot be ignored. My main issue, like I said before, is with the Nitrato exclusivity. We need server stability and proper tools as well as Linux support for players that just want to reliably host their own servers. We had these tools on ASE, most of which were there at launch, so why do we not have them for ASA? If they provide these tools over the coming weeks, I can say for sure that this is worth your money. But if ASA continues to have the lack of support and hosts do not get the tools they need, I can say with absolute certainty, do not buy this game. We need the proper tools to manage and secure our servers, and if we do not have that within the next few weeks or months at minimum, I cannot see myself playing ASA long term. It's a good game, but it's just a matter of whether or not it's going to be strangled by its stakeholders. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. These tend to be highly edited and I like to take my time with them to genuinely provide stuff for you all that is high quality, and so I hope you can see that in the recent uploads. Take care and I'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone.